Welcome back, folks. Today we are looking at a package. A very special package from BrassTrains.com. What could be inside? I've already pre-opened the tape to make this part easier. As we can see, it's very well packed. Let's go ahead and get it out of here. As you can see, it's a Sunset Models model. This is my first model from Sunset Models. My first purchase from Brass Trains, actually. And as you can see, this is going to be a Union Pacific 4122, a 9000, which is my favorite class. I saw this going on BrassTrains.com for $350, and I've wanted another 9 for a while now. So opening the box, we can see it's got this interesting slip. I guess someone was going to number this as 9060. But as you can see, it comes with all of its extra parts, which is very nice. Something I wish modern manufacturers would do is include all those extra screws. That'd be pretty swell. We have a historical note giving you a rundown of the locomotive and some specifications there. Feel free to pause that and read it if you'd like. And here we have some interesting sunset dollars. I've never seen this before. I'm guessing this is something that came with the models to be redeemed towards another sunset model. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's see. These were made in San Hongsa in Korea and was listed as a 1978 import. I think most Sunset 9s are 1978s. I don't believe Sunset models are considered very high-end, but maybe above West Side Model Company in terms of detail, but below key in overall quality. I absolutely love the 9s, and they are my favorite class of steam locomotive. There is a very brief cameo in Last of the Giants that shows 9000 as part of the evolution of steam on the Union Pacific. Some detail shots of her smoke box and the wheels, and a quick view of her under steam with some wheel slipping, which looks pretty epic. Something about this brief 20 second cameo hit me more than seeing the big boys and challengers and all the other steam in this video and for six year old me, I loved it and it's been my favorite locomotive class ever since. So this model comes with extra flanged drivers, which tells me at least uh, two of the wheels are going to be flangeless. And we have what looks like the... I think this is a boiler weight. I guess to give a little more weight to your look if you'd like. Interesting that this isn't already in the model. Now on to the main attraction. Let's get it out of this foam. Oh man, I absolutely love this. I'm very happy to have this. All those wheels, it's just something magical about it. You can see those flangeless drivers right there, two in the middle. And this one this one wheel has some blemish on it. I'm not sure what that is. There's some tarnish along the boiler, but that was noted on the website listing. Some back head detail.
the distinctive face of the 9000s. Go ahead and set this aside. Tender seems pretty pretty nice. Some tarnish there. Uh, very visible soldering joints on the ladders and up front. It's not a big deal though. Imagine when painted, it's not going to be a big deal. And it appears that the chassis can separate from the main body of the of the tender, which is really nice, and that should aid in a DCC and sound install, which is the goal eventually. My goal is to have this professionally painted, like the West Side Models uh, Overland that I also have. A link in the corner for that video. But first, let's take a look at how it runs. That's going to be one of the important parts of this. It was listed as average at all speeds on the Brass Train site. I don't know what average means in this context for uh, the Brass Train's website, but we'll take a look. The motor inside is a Canon, I think it's an M22 uh, CAN motor, I believe. There is a solid drive shaft, no rubber tube here, which is really nice. I was kind of not looking forward to having to replace a rubber tube with a nice drive shaft. I'm going to put this on the small stretch of track on the shelf layout and see how it performs. Of course, I'm using my cheap red knob train set controller, which isn't the best, but I should at least get an idea of how this thing runs, if there's any real major concerns. It's loud. Honestly, it sounds like it really needs some grease and some oil. And there's some hesitation going in reverse. And some of the running gear looks off too. I might have to take a closer look at that. Like most brass, the boiler comes off pretty easy. There's two screws at the back and one under the pilot. Removing these screws allows you to just pop the chassis out of the boiler. And honestly, I wish more modern manufactured steam took cues from brass in this way, not just with the details, but the ease of assembly. Lot of space inside that boiler. I could fit a decoder probably in there along with a boiler barker speaker maybe. Who knows, that's going to be a future endeavor. Here's our chassis. So many wheels. This thing is oh, its just nuts to look at. I can feel a little binding when rotating the, the drive shaft here. I'm not sure where the binding is coming from. It might be the hardened grease within the gearbox. It might be it might be part of the running gear. I'm not sure. But I think first what I want to do is clean out all that old grease and get it relubed and maybe we'll run a little happier then.
So first I'm going to remove the gearbox cover and you can see underneath that that grease is just awful. It's it's just like glue, really. It's it's bad. So the motor is attached to this mount which acts as a torque arm for the gearbox. I'm going to carefully move the motor out of the way and try not to put too much stress on these red and black wires that are connecting it to the frames. That will allow me to remove the gearbox and open it up and remove the uh, gears inside there and get those cleaned up. I'm not going to film the entire process of me disassembling this and cleaning it because it's just taking q-tips and removing the grease from the inside of this gearbox. Look at how bad that is. And I also took a toothpick and ran it around the worm gear uh, at least twice just to get the caked in grease that was packed into it. It was really bad. But once it's all cleaned up, this will get put back together, put it back on the rails, see how it runs. All I did was use some alcohol on q-tips and toothpicks. Standard cleaning procedures, nothing really out of the ordinary here. So I re-lubed everything with LaBelle oil for the bearing surfaces and grease for the gears. Honestly, it sounds much happier, especially going forward. It's honestly pretty quiet, actually. In reverse, it is a little louder, and there still seems to be a binding issue. And I think that's going to need some more professional eyes on it to diagnose and fix. At speed, it seems to be running just fine, though. So the price was, I think, right for what it is. I think it's on par with the Broadway Limited model in terms of details. Of course, the Broadway model will run nicer out of the box and has all the amenities of a contemporary model with DCC and sound and all that. But this edition was really about getting something that could more accurately portray 9000, as I believe the BLI model represents later iterations of the class, which is something I've only learned about in my Union Pacific type books by Crattville and Bush. Excellent additions to your library if you can find them. I do want to see about getting this professionally painted and looked at mechanically. This will be numbered as Class Leader 9000. I think it will complement the Broadway model very well. Now all I really need is a bald face 9, to round out the set of Pokemon 9000s, and, and I think that'll be a long time coming because bald face 9s are expensive. But that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys the new edition, and I hope you enjoyed. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.